Um, I'm Alex McAdams. I'm the development director at World Beyond War. Thank you so much. I'm co-moderating with Liz. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Before we get started, I just want to go through a few Zoom logistics. It's we're gonna. This is going to be about a 90 minute event um, and we are recording the event just so you know and then an email will follow with the link to, to the recording if anyone wants to share it or go back and um, watch it yourselves. Uh, please use the ch chat throughout the event to post comments. You can put questions in there if you like um, and if you haven't yet feel please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and like Liz said where you're you're tuning in from. Um, captions are also enabled for today's event, so you can click the CC live transcript button to enable the Zoom captions if you'd like. If you don't see that button, you may have to click the three dots in the bottom right corner of your Zoom screen to find the caption setting. Um, and a reminder that the captions are done by robots, not us, so please excuse any errors with the transcription. Um, and I'll pass it over to Liz. Thanks so much, Alex. and. Welcome everybody from all over the world where we are a global peace organization. My name is Liz Remiswell and I'm the Vice President of World Beyond War and I've been involved for seven or eight years since I was shoulder tapped by Leah Bolger in Chicago. So um, apologies from our wonderful president, Kathy Kelly. She had to catch a plane otherwise she would be here with with bells on. So, you know, we're very mindful that while we're celebrating this event, um, there's so many people suffering around the world from war and the effects of war. And um, so uh, we've asked Vanessa to just introduce a moment of silence. Hi, thank you, Liz. I'm Vanessa, organizing intern with World Beyond War. It's a pleasure to see you all here. Some of us just came from a very painful webinar with people from Gaza. And as we remember Gaza, we would like to acknowledge the devastation and destruction that war causes all over the world and hold a moment of silence for those affected by the ravages of war. Thanks, Vanessa. Um, okay, I think we now are going to share, some of you may have already seen this, so we've been sharing it out, but Greta on our team, who unfortunately is not able to be here, put together this really wonderful video um, showing the work that's been done over the 10 years since our 10th anniversary video. So Vanessa, you can cue that up if you'd like. January 1st, 2024 marks the 10th anniversary of World Beyond War, a global nonviolent movement to end all wars. World Beyond War was founded on January 1st, 2014, when co-founders David Hartso and David Swanson set out to create a global movement to abolish the institution of war itself, not just the war of the day. Since our founding, tens of thousands of people and over 800 organizations in 194 countries have signed World Beyond War's Declaration of Peace, pledging to work for a just and sustainable peace. Our work debunks the myths that war is inevitable, just, necessary, or beneficial. We work locally and globally, using education, media, and nonviolent activism to move the world away from wars, militarism, and violence, and towards peace. Key to World Beyond War's work is the holistic opposition to the institution of war at large. Not only all current wars and violent conflicts, but the industry of war itself, the ongoing preparations for war that feed the profitability of the system. This abolitionist approach sets World Beyond War apart from many other organizations. 
We engage in formal education as well as every variety of informal and participatory education interwoven in our media and activism work. Our seminal book, A Global Security System, An Alternative to War, the AGSS, provides a blueprint for ending war, one that is rooted in the strategies of demilitarizing security, managing conflict non-violently, and creating a culture of peace. The AGSS and its accompanying study, War No More, Discussion and Action Guide, received the 2018-2019 Educators Challenge Award by the Global Challenges Foundation. World Beyond War is also the recipient of the 2020 George F. Regas Courageous Peacemaker Award and the 2021 U.S. Peace Prize by the U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation. We have taught more than 15 online courses graduating over 1,300 alumni including War Abolition 101 and 201, War in the Environment, Leaving World War II Behind, Organizing 101, and more. In partnership with Rotary Action Group for Peace, we spearheaded the Peace Education and Action for Impact program, a peace building and leadership program that has supported over 20 youth-led peace projects in 19 countries. And since 2016, World Beyond War has hosted our popular annual No War Conference, creating a space that brings together hundreds of participants from dozens of countries to learn, network, strategize, and organize towards the abolition of war. At World Beyond War, we make use of all variety of media and communications, creating video, audio, text, and graphic media, and interacting with media outlets, large and small, including by monitoring and criticizing the pro-war media to which we strive to provide a counterweight. We are known for our webinars and have provided webinar hosting and technical assistance to many grassroots groups around the world. Our webinars and videos have over 300,000 views and counting. And thousands of listeners have tuned in to the World Beyond War monthly podcast, which features the voices and personal stories of anti-war activists around the world. In the past 10 years, we have put up dozens of pro-peace, anti-war billboards all over the world, including the US, Canada, Germany, Ireland, and Montenegro. One of our most frequent messages being that just 3% of U.S. military spending could end starvation on Earth. World Beyond War is also known for our original research and extensive resources. In particular, our research on the impact of U.S. foreign military bases was published by the Quincy Institute and has been referenced as the preeminent source on the topic. To present this data in a digestible format, we launched a one-of-a-kind interactive online tool that illustrates the extent of the U.S. military base empire, mapping out more than 800 bases worldwide. We also host a one-of-a-kind searchable resources database with over 1,000 entries that collates both original resources and materials from partner organizations, such as books, fact sheets, infographics, films, and more. And we curate the Mapping Militarism Project, which maps out where wars are, where troops are stationed, where weapons are located around the world. Complementing our education and media work, World Beyond War's nonviolent activism functions through a decentralized, distributed, grassroots organizing model focused on building power at the local level. We currently coordinate 28 chapters in 17 countries and maintain partnerships with nearly 100 affiliates around the world. From taking action to block the arms trade to promoting a global nuclear ban, from campaigning in solidarity with communities in active war zones to amplifying calls for decolonization, World Beyond War's organizing work takes many forms around the globe. World Beyond War staff provides tools, trainings, and resources to empower our chapters and affiliates to organize in their own communities based on what campaigns resonate most with their members, while at the same time organizing towards the long-term goal of war abolition. Together with our chapters and allies, World Beyond War has passed resolutions, divested cities from weapons, demilitarized municipal police forces, mobilized unarmed civilian protection teams in war zones, blocked weapons shipments, blockaded arms fairs, mobilized massive international weeks of action, and much more. Our high-profile, nonviolent direct actions shine a light on the governments and corporations complicit in the war machine and have made international media headlines. And through our organizing training and resources, we have mobilized other activists worldwide to go out and do the same. We invite you to join the movement for war abolition. Follow us at World Beyond War on all major social media platforms and learn more at worldbeyondwar.org. Guess this is.
the moment when I am supposed to suggest that people have on their cameras if they want and put it in gallery view if they want and take a screenshot or at least smile while I take a screenshot. So three, two, oh, one, give you say peace. Thank you. Did you get both galleries, David? Did I get both galleries? I don't know. Did I? Two. Oh. I think there's two on my on my machine anyway. I got about. Oh, you're right. You are right. Um, well, who knows if it's all different people or not. But if you think you might be in gallery two, one, two, three, say peace. Thank you so much. I think we've got. 34 people here, and this it's so great to, to see all of you. So next, we have got a special welcome for um, our two latest organizers for World Beyond War, Gabrielle, who's in Latin America mm -hmm. organizer, and Guy, who's in Africa. So uh, welcome, both of you. And Alex, we're going to invite both of them to speak about their work. Who would like to go first? That's right. I think we can get started with Gabrielle. If you want to go, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, at first, I want to greet uh, at the same time to recognize the available work that has been uh, during these 10 years by this powerful movement against war. Uh, <laughs> war beyond war, there are a large number of activists and advocates for peace moved by the idea of building a more just world, uh, a world with more solidarity, a more uh, human world, uh, in short, a world beyond war. In Latin America, we have joined the commemoration of these 10 years uh, as a moment to reaffirm our common commitment to end all wars, to maintain Latin America and the Caribbean as a song of peace, free of military bases and nuclear weapons, uh, in these last months, uh, we have been doing intense work to further advance the processes of organizing and networking with other movements and organizing forces in the continents that oppose uh, war. Uh, we have launched uh, several campaigns. One of the most important has been the campaign uh, for America as Song of Peace uh, with two main objectives. First, to denounce the presence of the South Thunder and demand its man this dismantling, as well as the all the foreign military bases in the regions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, our chapters in Latin America have uh, actively mobilized to denounce the genocide and the war in Palestine, organizing multiply activities, days of actions, as a space to talk about the what is the currently uh, situation in Gaza, in Palestine, and Ukraine. Uh, we have joined different actions to oppose militaries, our first, especially here in Colombia. And this year, we organized the first Neutrality Congress, where we, uh, where we are honored to have the participation of our Executive Director, David Swanson, uh, in person. Uh, we have contributed in important processes of education of peace, and we continue working to expand the presence and the recognition of our global movement, uh, in La especially in Latin America. It has been 10 years of great work. Uh, our goals may still seem very distant, but we are sure uh, of is what uh, we are on the right path. Uh, let's keep working together. We have the courage, we have the capacity, and we are right to build together a world beyond war. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. And it's just wonderful seeing everything that you are accomplishing in Latin America is and fantastic. Well done. So next we have Guy. Welcome, Guy. Uh, Where are yes. you? Yes, thank you yes, for giving me the floor. Fortunately, I can open my mirror. I'm in the dark in Cameroon now. 
but I'm happy to be part of this uh, event. Uh, at the time, uh, World Beyond War is turning 10. We are witnessing how the movement is also dealing with wars in Africa, which have long been neglected. So in Africa, the, 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 the first chapter of World Beyond War was established four years ago in Cameroon, and the movement has rapidly spread across the continent. Uh, as a result, chapters and prospective chapters have emerged in several countries. We have active chapters in Burundi, Nigeria, in Senegal, in Mali, in Uganda, in Sierra Leone, in, in Kenya, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Togo, the Democratic Republic in, uh, of Congo. We have a chapter in Gambia, we have a chapter in South Sudan. And these chapters are running several uh, peace education activities, creating peace clubs, and running campaigns in Africa uh, to educate about peace and to call on the end of the foreign military bases uh, in Africa. We have a, 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 an example of this campaign that is being uh, very uh, successful, a campaign to uh, put out, uh, to close uh, military bases in Djibouti. We had uh, another campaign that was recently launched to end the wars in Sudan. And we also have campaign actually ongoing to uh, stop the mass destructive weapons such as the autonomous weapon systems. So uh, the chapters uh, coordinators are very active and are eager to do more for peace to happen in Africa and contribute to, to peace in the world. So uh, thank you, I'm happy to be here and we look forward to share more of the infos of uh, what we are doing in the conference that we are organizing on the 15th and 16th of November this year. It's the second uh, World Beyond World Africa Peace uh, Congress. It's an annual event that will be happening on Zoom. So I wish I could share the link again for everyone to register and join us online on that occasion. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Guy. Awesome work. And uh, I've already registered for the World Beyond War African Conference. So next, we've got a special message from our wonderful Greta, who some of you have mentioned in the chat, who can't be with us today, but she's sent a special message. So um, let's listen to Greta. Hi, my name is Greta Zaro, and I'm the organizing director with World Beyond War. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this commemoration of World Beyond War's 10th anniversary. This is such important work that we do. It can be very challenging work. It can be very emotional work as we see the gross violations of international law that are happening all around the world, often happening with our tax dollars. And so it is so important that we continue working together in solidarity towards the abolition of war. And I thank you for all of the work that you have done to move us towards a just and sustainable peace. Thank you for being part of the Global World Beyond War Network. Thanks, Greta. <laughs> um, I think now David is going to launch a couple, we put together a couple questions for a poll that people can respond to for some um, kind of fun questions. Um, hopefully David's here, oh, here we go. There you go. So everyone can participate. Yes, yeah, so the idea is that you just fill in this and uh, two questions. One is, how many times has David Hartso been arrested? And the second one is, how many peace t-shirts does David Swanson have? And um, yeah, we should have probably asked how many has um, David Hartso got, how many t-shirts? But, you know, there's so many Davids, it does get a bit confusing, doesn't it? OK, 
give another few seconds for people to answer. Looks like 100% have answered the David Hartso question. Does everybody know how to answer the poll, actually? I mean, how, See, every how single to person has answered the first question, and one person didn't have enough interest to answer the second question or didn't scroll down and see it. So I think we're good, right? I think so. David Hart, so do you want to tell us the correct answer to this, the first question? 156. <laughs> oh, impressive. Oh, for civil disobedience. Yay. I got that answer. Walking <laughs> trains and trucks and airplanes <laughs> carrying bombs. Very cool. Uh, what about you, David Swanson? Uh, this one the people people found easier to get right than David's incredible uh, arrest record. Um, that one, that one we fooled more people on. So All right. how, many, how many? What's the correct answer, David? Oh, hang on. We're we gonna do a. Um, are we gonna do a little competition with John Rua first? Actually, sounds good. Okay, John Rua, and uh, we're gonna spotlight. John Rua and David Swanson right now. And they're actually going to reveal to us their t-shirt collection, their peace t-shirt collection that has to be something to do with peace. And uh, we've they ha they're having to exclude their um, sweatshirts, although John Rua's already admitted he might have to cheat. But let's go, guys. Would you go like ahead, to David. just hold, up, hold, it, hold them up for us? I don't know how to how to view myself and John, but if somebody could help others with how to view myself and John at the same time, that would be great. Yeah, is there a way to just put David and I up? Well, someone was going to spotlight us both. I think if you in the view at the top of the Zoom, if you click and do, um, there's one that is the multi speaker, and so if you both are kind of talking, it would show up. I think. Okay, that's it. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So David had one. Ah, get rid of the poll. I'm trying. I don't know how the hell to make it stay away. I've gotten rid of it several times. Uh huh. I'm not sure what will make the poll actually stay away, but we'll see. Uh, oh, that's the second one. Okay. So who's who's uh, counting? Are that's we going to count this one? That's one. Feel free to count. Here, here's my number one. Number one, two, three. Two. Two. <laughs> three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five, six. This is gonna take a while. Six, seven. Seven, eight. Nine. And should I just go a little faster, maybe? I think so, <laughs> given that you have 40 something t shirts. <laughs> well, we got to count, though. Somebody's got to keep tabs. Well, keep I've got mine 13. John, if you count yours out loud, 13. that'd be great. Please. 13, 15. Wait a minute, wait a minute, 14 then. 15. Hold it, hold it. Well, I'm not waiting a minute. I'm going faster if that's okay, but you count and I'll count. 17. I've lost count. I think 16. <laughs> 18. 17. For those. 19. 18. 20. 21. 19. 22, 20, 
26 we're getting into the old ones where kids ask you what they're what they say uh 27 Okay, Four. Are just peace and justice. You've got me. 35. <laughs> Should I stop? 36. Yeah. Keep on going. You keep going for 37. 38. Uh -huh. 39. 40. 41. <laughs> 42. 43. 44, 45, it's supposed to be 48, but I'm winding up at 46. I must have lost two. Maybe one's in the wash. Well, that's an impressive effort. And it's, um, one has to wonder how your wife can put up with you having that many peace t-shirts. Uh, well done. <laughs> and a good, good second. Good second. So, um, John, and what about you, Mr. Hart? So, have you just got some of your T-shirts there as well? Just, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I wear them often, but I don't have them with me. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get them together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you can count them. But Martha's asking, whose job is it to refold them? <laughs> I suppose okay, well, mine and John's. Uh, the rocker thing. Okay, so thanks so much. Um, David Swanson is the winner, and but if anybody you know next year can come up with any more, that'd be fantastic. So we've come really now to our open mic time, and um, we can't get rid of this poll on the screen, can we? It's still there. <laughs> Not for everyone. I think you have to click out of it yourself too, Liz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, my computer's not working properly today. <laughs> Can't click out of it. Never mind. Um, so we're just going to ask everybody now to um, to put your hand up and to share. Like now, how many? We've got forty people here, and how much time have we got? About. And we and we have a pre-recorded from Greta as well. We've done that, David. We, we've done the 10 year anniversary. Have we done Greta's yeah. short personal message to this meeting? Yes, yeah. we did. But oh, we did. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I skipped through it. You were counting t shirts. I just, love, I just love proving David Swanson wrong about something. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Occasionally. Um, so we're going to ask everybody to share now, and we're going to stick keep, keep this to how many minutes, Alex? It's a, it, know, how many minutes? 40 people at the time we have left is just a little bit, it's about a minute and 20 seconds. Um, well, if, if everybody can keep it up until, say about a minute, we're gonna, we'll, we'll give you just over a minute and just to really, this is open mic. So um, please put your hands up so we can call on you easily. And we just want a chance for you to share whatever you'd like to um relating to our 10th anniversary of world beyond war so um, and don't be offended if i cut you off i will be timing everyone and setting a buzzer yeah move things along alex is going to set a buzzer so that we can keep the thing moving so um if you'd like to put up your hand and or, you or to, um, use the raised hand function as well raised hand you use the raised hands function thank you and um, and Alex and I will call upon you. So let's start with you, Ed in Ireland, Ed Horgan, board member. Are you unmuted? 
Ed, you have to, you got it. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Hello, I'm Edward Horgan, calling from Ireland and Europe. In the words of W.B. Yeats, the poet, spoken over 100 years ago, all has changed, changed utterly. Once again, all has changed utterly. Genocide and war crimes are being broadcast daily into our homes. The rules of international law are being broken by the most powerful states in the world. We must all work tirelessly with world beyond war to end war. And many, many thanks to all the great work that World Beyond War has done over the last 10 years. But we must continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. And next we have Yuri. Yuri from Ukraine. Welcome. Please unmute. Yes, greetings. Uh, greetings from Kyiv, capital of Ukraine, uh, still bombarded by Russian army. Uh, and uh, it is hard to work uh, for peace when uh, uh, Russian army bombards uh, your city and uh, uh, your government tries to prohibit uh, your organization uh, and uh, prosecutes you uh, for uh, justification of Russian aggression in anti-war statement condemning Russian aggression, which is crazy. Uh, we are continuing to um, uh, 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 defend human right to conscientious ob objection to military service, uh, uh, providing legal aid, uh, and we are continuing to advocate peace. For example, currently we are working uh, on a, a statement uh, against nuclear blackmail, uh, uh, which uh, is, of course, a problem uh, uh, because uh, 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 current... Uh, uh, tensions uh, uh, are uh, 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 gives uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, concerns, and uh, also we launched uh, uh, a school of pacifism, uh, 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 and uh, we have a lessons on nature of pacifism, right to peace, right to conscientious objection, nonviolent protection of peace, and organization of peaceful future, uh, uh, and uh, of course AGSS. Uh, uh, is a great help for this uh, educational endeavor. Thank you. Uh, congratulations uh, with uh, anniversary of uh, this great organization, which uh, contributes a lot uh, for uh, advocacy of peace worldwide. Continue to work. We are a great team. Thank you, Yuri. Wonderful. So uh, let's let's call on you, Fern. Would you like to come on, Fern, now and unmute, please? Yeah. Hi, I'm Fern. Um, for me, nature is a healer. I go try to go to the parks every day. Um, I have never been able to. Uh, I had no memory of my history when I came into my first twelve-step program. And I have never understood how anybody could be against Martin Luther King when he stood against war, prejudice, and poverty. <laughs> um, and um, for me, it took me, it still is one day at a time learning my own history, but my family properties, um, Tishman, were stolen by Zionism and used to fund the Israeli Six-Day War. And so I've always written about my history from 1963 and when a coup began. And like the latest thing is I just found, um, trying to go through old communications, I found some things on Philip Zelko and how um, he was hired to make up myths. And some of them are about rape and how 9-11 was created and how the Israeli genocide and also the Afghanistan war with um, opium more money was made from the selling of opium than for the selling of oil so anyhow I keep learning more about how these wars are made out of propaganda and it, it's, it makes me very um, angry I have to go to a lot of meetings to learn I have no I didn't cause it. I can't control it. I can't cure it. And just watching how many people just are unaware 
I'm so grateful for uh, actions against war. Um, thank you for letting me share. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Fern. Um, we can go to Zul. I'll invite you to unmute. Thank you. Here's a shirt I don't know if David showed. 20 years old, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the Hip Hop Caucus this fall with Reverend uh, Lennox. And uh, just a quick announcement. So good to see all of you, and particularly Yuri, to know that you're, that you're safe and you're well. Um, we are uh, presenting the first production of the new Rising Together Talk Back Theater in New York City at Mary House in mid-November. It's by Jack Gilroy. It's called Reap What You Sow, Don't Lose Heart. These are going to be short plays. All of them are talkbacks. This first one will be moderated by Kathy Kelly. And we are going to pay the actors and offer it to all of you and all the peace and justice groups and schools and universities, churches you might know, to use as fundraisers, uh, chapter builders, and to activate your membership. So um, I'll put my um, email in the chat, and if people are interested, we're going to do a preview and showcase November 16th and 17th at Mary House in New York, and then we're going to tour in spring 2025, and we hope to see you wherever you are. Thank you. Thanks, Zul, right on time. <laughs> the buzzer was just about to go off. Um, we'll go next to David Copper. I'll invite you to unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. I'll even show my handsome face. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to, uh, to y'all and, uh, and from the beautiful city of Stanton, Virginia. Um, look to congratulate you. Uh, and, and Fern, I also am a friend of Bill. Thanks for sharing. And I have a question for John that just counted his t-shirts. Um, is there any thought of doing the human shield in uh, the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, like it was, uh, planned for Ukraine at one point. I think people actually went over and looked into the possibilities. Uh, that's all. Thank you and congratulations. Shall I answer that quickly? Yeah, Any... go, for, go for it, John. Yeah. Yes, I just spent the week with um, Mel Duncan, who has put together uh, a proposal, a uh, mm. sophisticated proposal to send 100 unarmed peacekeepers into the West Bank as soon as we can get them there and then to Gaza when there's a ceasefire. And we spent the week with the Congress, the State Department, and USAID trying to drum up support for that mission. Dave, if you remind me by email, I'll send you all the information about that. It's a very serious proposal. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> okay, we'll move over to Gar, Gar Smith. I will ask you to unmute yourself. Sorry, my keys were sticking. That took some uh, seconds out of my appropriated uh, talk time, but I have prepared a short 30-second poem, which I will now deliver. Here's to us, and we, and you, united by the work we do. We speak for peace and pray for calm, say boycott war and ban the bomb. As our tenure tenure nears, with fear of war, with nukes, not spears, we know that wars cannot be won. But in a world at peace, we'll all be one. So great, Gar. Thank you. Uh, we'll move now over to Alice. Alice Slater, you can unmute yourself. 
Hi, everybody, from the belly of the beast here in New York City, near the UN. Ooh. And um, I just, I love World Beyond War. I just think, like, the uh, it, it's making something an idea whose time has come. Like, nobody, you say, oh, you can never end war. You know, it's, like, ridiculous. And here we are showing the myths about war and that you that it is possible to end war and it has like such a positive vision and we're going everywhere and doing everything and it just it it warms the cockles of my heart as my father would have said so I'm delighted to be with it and to work with it and uh, I mean it seems like the more we do, the worse the wars get, but maybe things are always darkest before the dawn. We just had an incredible conference call today on Gaza. Like there were, I don't know, 362 or 562 people all over the world talking about Gaza and Kathy Kelly and David were key in the organizing of it. So I'm, I'm delighted and proud to be part of this. Thanks, Alice. Um, Liz, are you still on mute or are you able to, I'm not sure what happened. I'm, I'm inviting you to unmute, but I don't think you, I think you should have. Okay, oh. yeah, sorry. I've, I had some computer technology problems. Sorry about that. Should we say hi to um, a wonderful advisory board member, Ravira? Hi everyone, congratulations to everyone in World Beyond War for making this a powerful and incredible 10 years of organizing and outreach. That video that uh, you all made at the start, uh, just summarizing some of the highlights, just fills my heart with pride and, and appreciation for the, the so many people who made this all possible. I know that my life has been transformed by World Beyond War from going to Ireland and standing next to Maureen McGuire in the middle of a di direct action to uphold Irish neutrality to getting to read people's responses to one of the courses, learning in, from the AGSS that war is not as old as human beings, but only came around 15,000 years ago changed how I talk about storytelling as an author and I get up and make these outrageous claims to young people reading my um, peace waging fantasy series that there was a time before war, war and there will be a time after war and if when we get there as humans it will be because we're, be because we're telling different stories and we're working with organizations like World Beyond War. So thank you all so much for what you do. I'm really honored to be part of this movement. Thank you. That's wonderful, Rivera. Let's go to Europe now. Um, hi, Florina. Welcome. You're in Romania? Uh, I'm actually in Bratislava right now. I just want to say happy birthday, World Beyond World. This is meant to be a, a party. I, I'm so happy to be part of this uh, wonderful community and I think we should have more of these events we shouldn't have it just every 10th year or something we should have them ideally as far as I'm concerned every week because I'm a party animal so if I don't know if we could organize these uh, meetings more often these informal socializing type of events I would enjoy that very much because we live in such dark difficult times and it's it's so great to be part of this community and we have a lot of work to do but there's also i mean there are lots of wonderful people in the world including world beyond war and yeah i think we should spend more time together and more time talking to each other and I think I've used my one minute, and that's what I wanted to say. Happy birthday, World Beyond War. Thanks, Marina. And it's exciting, this talk of new um, European chap chapters starting as well. Let's go to word David? Yes, uh, my raise hand is not working. I just wanted to... Uh, 
celebrate. Ten years ago, my meeting uh, David Swenson and together us hatching up this fantastic idea of not just ending the next war, but ending all war. I've been an anti-war activist all my life, but uh, the madness continues, the addiction to violence and, and war is a way of resolving conflict. And President Eisenhower once said, I believe that the people of the world want peace so much the governments have to get out of the way and let them have it. Well, that's what we're doing at World Beyond War. We're letting them know we're not going to put up with it. And we have people in 194 countries that have joined us in this working for the end of all war. So thank you for everybody to help making this dream come true. We have a worldwide movement to end the madness of war. Thank you. Hey, David. Let's go to Bernard. Hello, Bernard. Please unmute. It's a bit of a lag. Uh, nice to see you all. Here was a t shirt I've been making these. Um, last few months, actually, since I came to Washington and met you all, been making these t-shirts. And we uh, hope, I hope to be making a whole lot more of them. Um, uh, <clears throat> as you know, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Brussels and the organization that I work with is um, the CSO, Comité Surveillance OTAN. It's the Committee of Surveillance of NATO, the NATO Surveillance Committee. We could call it. <clears throat> so we're in the belly of the beast, too. Um, and um, well, um, I would just want to say before um, congratulating you all and us all um, that, uh, well, for one thing, it was fantastic to meet many of you in Washington. It was a really great event for me. And it was also a great event for you, I think. And it was a great event for us in Belgium for us to come there. Um, However, it was kind of a scary as heck the following week, you know, when they came out with their long list of propositions for the future, um, that uh, that NATO event was, uh, it makes your blood run cold when you look at actually what it's designed to do for the future. Uh, it's kind of a guarantee that there will be war forever, their, their trip. Anyway, um, I would just want to pass on also a, couple, a little bit of news, uh, what's going on. We had also spoken about working together to maybe uh, prepare the next counter summit, which as many of you know, for the counter summit of NATO is going to be in Holland next year. That's in uh, like July, beginning of July. And there's a very na small nascent group trying to build up a little planning organization to prepare a, a proper event for that um, in Holland. It's not going to be easy. Holland is Holland. And uh, the, the actual director of NATO, what's his name, the, the whatever their title is, is from Holland. Anyway, also this coming week is a if you could just if you could just wrap up Bernard sorry wrapping up wrapping up just yeah. last last thing to announce that in one week or two weeks in Berlin there's going to be a really big um uh three uh, court conference um I'm trying to get uh Germany out of the whole war um thing that's been going on there's a big conference on the 1st to the 3rd of November in Berlin okay thank you and Fantastic. thank you for everything you've been doing Fantastic. And it's good to see David Swanson folding his t-shirts up. I think John's already folded his. So uh, <laughs> um, should we go across to you, Alison, in Australia? <laughs> Alison, would you like to unmute? Hang on, I have to ask her to unmute, but I do not see Alison right now. Oh, here Alison Bronowski. Would you did, like to? Did unmute? you want to speak, Allison? I can't. I got can you. Okay. you can now. Okay. <laughs> you got me now? Yes. 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 Thank, 
Thanks. Okay. Happy birthday, everybody. It's just wonderful to get a whole lot of new faces. I totally endorse the idea that we should do this more often. It's really good for the membership to see each other and meet like this. Um, we are totally consumed here um, with stopping the means of the next war, which are going ahead in Australia with the support of both major political parties, but nobody else. Um, and that is the AUKUS project, which on which lately we've been hearing from American generals that they don't want to be in it anyway because they can't supply us with the technology or any of the equipment that we need. And we hope that that is exactly what happens. And we will end up paying for stuff we haven't got, but it's better than having it. <laughs> and then we might be able to get on with what we should really be doing, which is living in happiness and harmony with our neighbors, particularly China, and forget all this rubbish about NATO joining our region and keep war at home instead of exporting it. Um, that's my little sermon for today, but that's what we're doing. And you'll hear more from me about this as we go. Thanks, Alison. And that's something a lot of us are working on, stopping the AUKUS and the NATO campaigns. So, um, yeah. So let's go to you, Julie. Julie Watkins, can you unmute, please? And please keep on putting your hands up. And then we'll go across to you, David Swanson, because your hand is up. Yes, I just wanted to say I really appreciate World Beyond War because it has helped keep me sane when people don't want to talk about or even admit we're in the middle of a war culture. And it really helps. And so I wanted to say thank you. And when I take care, when I'm watching the webinars or reading the articles, then when I'm talking one-on-one -on, -one on people, when I only have a little time to slip a little bit of peace thought in, it's easier and you make that easier. And I'm so glad everybody's doing doing the work and just thank everybody and happy birthday. That's it. Thank you. David, David Swanson. Should, should I go or, or should I go last? I noticed on the agenda I was assigned to go last, so. Yeah, no, that's okay. So you, perhaps you'd like to take your hand down then, that's okay. <laughs> go later. Yes, um, Lee, did you have your hand up? Lee Kavanagh? Yes, please unmute. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm new to this, so forgive me um, if I don't understand all the intricacies. Um, and this is what I clean my toilet with. Um, I washed it, so it's the only blue thing I had. Uh, <laughs> as far as I can tell, war seems to be normal in uh, throughout history. My suggestion is put women in charge and war will stop. That's it. If the women are in charge, they are the caregivers and they are the they are they are the providers of life. If you put them in charge, war will stop. That's unlikely to happen. So what can we do? Well, for a start, there's 40 people here. We need 40,000 people here on this site. So we need to get out there and we need to create a bit of energy, a bit of havoc. The end oil people are thrown you know, paint and stuff at and soup at artworks. What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, that's it. Um, look, I come from a country that has lived through a lot of war and it's it's the opposite of life. It's horrible. It's 
if you saw, if you looked at some of the images coming out of Gaza or Lebanon, and I'm not racking on the uh, people from Israel here, like there's wars in Africa that never get spoken about. Um, there's there's 30 wars going on at the moment in the world, and no one cares. But if you, can you imagine your child or your brother or your mother burning to death? That's what war is. It's people being turned into bits of bodies. If they're lucky, it's quick. But a lot of the time it's not quick. It's slow and it's horrible and it's it's the worst, worst thing that you could possibly imagine. And we need to do better. We need to stop investing in the arms industry, which it creates billions, trillions of dollars, tax dollars for governments, and they just keep investing in this stuff. Sorry, I know I'm coming to the end of my yeah, time. You're a little just bit old. Stop it. Stop exactly. it. Stop it. Stop it. Why aren't we investing the same amount of energy in creating enough food or uh, solar panels, you know, renewable energy? Why do we want to? Because we're paying these defense, they're called defense companies, trillions of dollars. Find out who owns them and take them out. You know, just stop doing this. Stop investing Thank in... Thank you, Lee. That's exactly Thank you. right. Thank you. 100% behind you. And thank you so much for joining us. I've just noticed we've got a special guest of honor who's just enjoyed, joined us all the way from um, um, Ecuador, I think. it's Of course, it's our, our first president, Leah Bolger. Welcome, Leah. Leah is um, the first president, and she... Um, I'd like to say she worked her butt off setting up World Beyond War um, for many, many years. And now she's um, enjoying a lovely retirement. Is it Ecuador? Yes. I'm not very good at geography. So welcome, Leah. Thank you so much for everything you, that you did setting up World Beyond War and working with the two Davids. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Can, 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 so you hear me? You. can you hear me, Liz? Yeah, you're, you're a bit late, though, sweetie. Yes, I am late. I was. Uh, I teach uh, English. I'm a volunteer teacher of English in in a, a city about an hour away from here. So um, that's how I spend my Saturdays and in, in preparing for it during the week. Um, I I am just so thrilled at how far World Beyond War has come. Uh, as you said, I, I I was with World Beyond War before we had a name and we were debating what to call ourselves and. And uh, so it just, uh, I can remember sitting around thinking about it and talking about it and what do we want this organization to be? And it has truly become so much more than I would have imagined from the beginning. And I, I can't speak for David and David, but um, uh, I just never thought that we would have, I mean, David Swanson always said, we, we want staff all over the world and, and we do, we have staff all over the world. And we, you know, it's just incredible to me. Um, so I, I, I am retired from anti-war work now. Um, I'm, I'm teaching English and that's how I'm contributing to the, to the world. I, I have sat in on a few of the webinars that World Beyond War has done. I did the last one in Spanish, which was, those that, that was a big deal for me to, to understand in Spanish. But, um, I, I just got to where it was affecting my mental health to try to rail at the machine every day, day in and day out. And I, I, I just really, it was too much for me. So um, the, as a cautionary note to all of you who are still deep in the trenches working every day, all day long, um, as we just heard Lee, Lee speak so emotionally, it, it, uh, it is upsetting, it's wrenching to do this kind of work. And Please, everybody, take care of yourselves, too. Uh, it's so important that we take care of each other and you take care of yourself because uh, this, wor this work, just it doesn't end, and it's hard to see much progress. 
but World Beyond War is doing great things. The website, the webinars, the education, the outreach, the organizing, the demonstrations, the it's just it's just amazing it boggles my mind and i miss you all i i miss being a part of the community and just recently the president of ecuador has announced that he wants to bring american troops back to ecuador so there is work to be done here too if i decide i want to jump back into it it's that's it's certainly uh, an option here um but anyway i miss i do miss the work um my my mental health is appreciating the time away from it, but um, thank you all for everything you've done. And David Hartso, it's so good to see you looking good. <laughs> yes, thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for inviting me to this wonderful celebration. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Leah. And you know, it's very good message. We all need to take care of ourselves and take care of each other. And um, and. Uh, so we've got, um, let's, I can see, I'm, I'm going to call on Joseph and Phil. Phil's our education director in Britain, and Joseph's in Japan. And I also see Rachel there. But first of all, I'm, I'd like to ask Edith, you, and then Vanessa. Please unmute Edith. Welcome. You are muted and then muted, Edith. Okay, okay go. Hi. Um, I've only been involved with the uh, peace movement uh, for about, since about 2007. And it's really taken me till about last year that I began to think there should be no wars. That uh, It's just so ingrained in me. I, I just don't, understand why it has to even be but um i, I was on the previous um zoom that you had uh, half an hour before uh, and there was a man who named so many things in the uh un so many resolutions and so many things that had been passed that would cause us to have no war if we if we went by them i i didn't catch his name and what they were but I think it's wonderful that you're doing this to, to, I even didn't focus on the name of the organization until recently, the world beyond war. It just seems to me so wonderful to think about it. Um, and I, I think it's, there's such, such terrible wars going on now, um, as, as always. I don't think any of them should continue. So that's about all. Thank you, Edith. Great to have you on board. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, thank you all for being here. I am so honored to be an organizing intern for World Beyond War. It is so amazing to live my passion, live my dream. Thank you to David and Greta and the entire staff. I am so amazed by the work and dedication that all of you do. And together, we can abolish war. Happy birthday, World Beyond War. Thank you so much. OK. OK, what about you, Phil? Are you there with us? Because you're just another wonderful staff member who does fantastic education programs. And we do appreciate everything you do, like all we appreciate all of our staff. Would you like to say hi? Thanks, Liz. Yeah, thank thank you, everybody. Um, I'll keep myself off off the camera, but just uh, just amazing to see some familiar faces and not so familiar faces on screen today. Just thank you, everybody, for for all that you do. So I'm Phil, the education director, and I'm so fortunate to work with many, 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 many of the people that we work with around the world. Uh, Will be more has. Um, like 2,900 and counting strong alumni network that, that we work with and that we equip to oppose war and promote peace around the world. And many of the people that we work with go on to work in um, some of the work that we do around the alumni network or, or develop chapters or join chapters or, or other activities. Just so thank you for everything that you do. One of the things that we are working on 
is an upcoming course. So please, please, please join us for this wonderful upcoming course. And Rivera's here. Hi, Rivera. Um, media and communications, uh, one of the three broad strategies or three, one of the three broad pillars of our work is education, activism and media. And the focus of this course is on media and communications, a really fundamental part of trying to oppose war and promote peace. So please join us. It's starting on the 4th of November, and we hope that many can join us. Many are already signed up, which is great. Uh, we hope that more can join us as well. So maybe I'll put a link in the chat as well. And then in addition to this, we have our seminal book, which uh, Yuri and others have spoke about already, A Global Security System. We're updating this book to try and be um, updated with regards to the contemporary challenges around peace and security around the world right now. So we'd love to hear from you about uh, what needs to be included or deleted or, or adapted in this book. So um, I'm going to put both of the things in the chat right now, the media and communications course and the link for the I was going to say a global security system, but it might be called a different name, but the, the new book. So uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, great to see you all. Thank you so much, Phil. And um, it's good to know that you're promoting our courses on our party. And while you're promoting our courses, I'm going to throw in something else really important, which is, um, I hate to say it, money, because it's it's your money. Thank you so much for all your contributions that allows us to employ this incredible staff and we and we need to have um, more money so we can have more staff all around the, the all around the globe so um so let's let's come i said let's call on you joseph you're in japan and we have incredible um chapter co coordinators uh greta knows exactly how many there are but she's not here but joseph is one of our early chapter coordinators working in japan it's great to see you Please unmute. Oh, you can unmute. I, I'm looking for him. I have to invite him too. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I needed to be invited. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Joseph S. Sertier and I live in Japan. Um, and I, we've, I've been working for the last several years to build a chapter and I'm based in Nagoya, which is right in the center of the country between Osaka and Tokyo. And I've been um, doing work for peace since 1999, but the last several years with World Beyond War have been the most intense, the most meaningful, and the most intellectually challenging. And I agree with, I agree with what Leah said about the need for us to maintain ourselves, to, to heal ourselves. Uh, opposing, and I want to say that opposing wars is very hard uh, especially all wars, to re to resist, to oppose all wars uh, is so difficult. Uh, in Japan, we see a lot of Russophobia and Islamophobia, and um, it's hard to resist the demonization of Russians while at the same time rejecting re Russia's invasion. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. And I think, uh, yeah, I agree with other, some what some other people said that we should have more fun events. I've been, I actually have been doing party, what I call parties in Japan uh, with my chapter. I call it a party and then usually wind up talking about nobody plays any music and nobody sings and <laughs> we wind up talking about all the problems of the world. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think we need to have fun and, and especially if these are, if these are like the, our last days before the first nuclear war, uh, we, I think we should have, really have nope. a good yeah have a good time <laughs> don't even think <laughs> that <laughs> work hard and play hard uh, great to see you guys thank you thank you so much joseph keep going keep positive Thanks. um while we're um talking about japan i'd love to say hi to rachel and then we'll come to you my mikhail and diane rachel would you like to say hi and um, mention what's been your work with Pat Elder, who's not here today, in Japan. I'm trying to find Rachel one second, so I can ask her to unmute. Done. So she's, 
Okay, hi everyone. Uh, how do you do? And uh, people whom I know, hello, how are you? Uh, congratulations and happy birthday for 10th anniversary of World Beyond War. Uh, I would like to take advantage of this uh, occasion to say thank you to Joseph. Uh, he's been such a great support for our project. Uh, currently, I'm a, a member of um, Veterans for Peace, and starting from 2016, I uh, I've been organizing a peace speaking tour in Japan and Okinawa. And especially this year, uh, Joe took us to um, show around Nagoya's uh, controversial airport, which is shared by military and civilian and also um, a science developing facility. And uh, uh, he also hooked us up with a local activist. And please remember, Nagoya is a key place in Japan because that place is kind of hiding from a major uh, media, but located in between Tokyo and Osaka. Nagoya holds two major corporations, Japan's backbone. One is Toyota, you know, and another one is Mitsubishi Heavy Industry which is a warmonger, a very big war profitee, profitee, profiteer of Japan. And uh, right now they are um, assembling F-35 that Japan purchased from the United States. Not only that, once something war st like starts, uh, that facility will be uh, kind of garage for F-35 of US Air Force. So. It is going to be Nagoya time soon, and we would like to uh, uh, preemptively stop that too. And uh, I am, let me introduce myself a little bit. Um, I started interpreter, interpreter position originally as a, just a volunteer when Hibakusha came to New York, 2010. That was the... Uh, uh, NPT, no, uh, Nuclear non Proliferation Review Conference, every five years. And starting from there, I've been doing uh, Hibakusha Interpreter for a long time. And uh, then I uh, became independent interpreter as I was doing the uh, volunteer staff for Peace Boat US. Uh, Peace Boat let me go on, uh, on board six times so far. And I was able to travel in the ballpark of 55 to 60 countries, which gave me amazing amount of um, uh, education, which uh, it was hand on education. And through this time, I was able to amend and fix my understanding from textbooks to reality. And uh, I was some. Um, I've been sharing that knowledge and experience through my uh, peace activism. I also would like to say a big thank you to Alice Slater. She was my one of my biggest mentors and who asked me to come on to the stage and help those hibakushas and other uh, people who needed an inter interpreter. So if she didn't knock on my shoulder, I wouldn't be doing this now. So Alice, thank you very much. Wonderful, yeah, that's... The power of tapping on the shoulder is huge, isn't it? So let's go across to you, Mikhail. Can you unmute, please? Um, one second. And please keep on putting your hands up. We'd love to hear from all of you here today. Okay. Like to. no, no, I have unmuted. Uh, yes, I am Mika from Finland, more precisely from Lovisa, which is a small town about 70 kilometers to the east from Helsinki. Um, and it's not far from the Russian border. I can actually go with my small sailing boat to the uh, Russian border in the Gulf of Finland. Um, but unfortunately, 
I can no longer cross the border. It has been closed. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this uh, growing worldwide peace movement that has emerged in the United States. The forces and movements that brought down the Roman Empire made, matured within its own borders. Similarly, the current U.S. Empire needs an American grave digger. Um, uh, I, I am. I have been during the last two three years. Um, I have reactivated myself as as a peace activist, which I started to be in the nineteen eighties. Uh, in order to resist Finland's joining NATO and and now and especially resisting the bilateral defense cooperation agreement between Finland and USA. Um, and we have our campaign which included the peace movements of Finland lost terribly. The Finnish parliament unamo un how do you say? <laughs> Mikhail, if you could if you could maybe wrap up shortly, that would be great. We only have a couple of minutes. Left. I can stop directly if you want. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Diane, would you like to speak? Your hand has been up for a bit. I'll invite you to unmute. There, I clicked unmute. Meeting alert. Okay. I guess I'll do the alert. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Diane Blay, and I was at a 2016 World Beyond War conference at American University. And um, so it has meant a lot to me since then and, um, and before. And that's where I first heard of WILF, which is the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, which I joined and, and currently running for uh, president of US, WILF US. Also, as far as the women's organizations, I just wanted to mention PEP, which is Project Enduring Peace, and the Founding Mothers Movement. Both of these are women-generated uh, peace organizations. So, um, you know, because there's a lot of belief that women are our future in, in peace. So um, I like World Beyond War because I believe men are, we have to be there too. So my best wishes to World Beyond War and every other peace organization. Thanks, Diane. We have just a couple minutes left if if there's anyone else who would like to say something. Okay, well, thank you so much for everyone that did participate. Oh, Marion, I will ask you to unmute. Yes, hello everybody. I just want to say a little hello from Africa, giving you a few news from Africa. So we celebrate today with you, even if our oldest chapter is four years old, and we are not even through our first year with an organizer, so we are the, the baby activist around here, but we are coming and it's very exciting to see this, you know, coming together and, and thriving. So and yes, we need your help from all of you because some of us, we are um, doing the same thing that, that we all do, but we do it, you know, some of us from uh, countries where there is actual war going on. So sometimes uh, it's a bit difficult and we also have some bad internet. And so this is why sometimes we can be with you but we're here and we're working hard and we, we're happy to celebrate with, with you today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marion. That brings us just about right on schedule. Um, so David Swanson's gonna close us out with some closing words.
Go for it, David. Uh, thank you, Alex. I will do my best. Thank you to Alex and Liz and Vanessa and uh, everybody for putting this together. It's wonderful to see people who've been part of World Beyond War for 10 years and for 10 days and for everything in between. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting to me that we have about 40 people here to have a party and we just had about 240 people on a webinar to figure out what we can do about Gaza, which is, uh, I think, a good thing that we're more serious about taking on war uh, than about celebrating the fun we've had for the past 10 years taking on war. Um, but we have had a lot of fun. I have enjoyed myself uh, tremendously. Um, I think I would have been far more miserable uh, hiding under my bed and and complaining and predicting doom um, it is wonderful to see uh, to see Leah, who I haven't seen in years, but saw ten years ago. Um, I hope uh, Gabrielle will do what's needed to get her help in keeping bases out of Ecuador. Um, it, it's great to see David Hartso talk about uh, the meeting that a bunch of us were at. 10 years ago and to hear various other people bring up the, the annual meetings we've had uh, that, that we had in person for years before, you know, Zoom took over and uh, the, the, the kayak flotilla on the Potomac and the, the demonstrations and protests in Limerick and Toronto um were just wonderful things um and all the in-person meetings traveling around the world and with chapters and since zoom took over all the zoom meetings and the interpreting and the you know calls in numerous languages simultaneously um has just been wonderful i mean this is my very favorite thing about world beyond war is doing global events and global actions with people who've developed a global identity and don't talk about themselves or each other as being from some particular place so much as from the peace movement uh, of the world. Um, this and what we, what we sort of were from day one, although we've learned a tremendous amount from each other in 10 years, uh, and grown and developed, but being for the total abolition of war and war making and war planning and war thinking without using war to get there, uh, which just about nobody in on the planet, uh, you know, is is really quite to the point of understanding. I mean, it's it's a process that we all struggle with, uh, but this is you know, this is what I love is, is to be able to go to a place where at least some people at least sort of want to do that, want to abolish war without using war. That this, this, you know, has pros and cons in terms of organizing. Uh, we heard from, uh, from Joseph and others that it's, that it's hard, but it's also easy. It also doesn't turn off a lot of people that are turned off by supporting war making of of a particular side um but it's it's what it, it's what we need if we're going to survive um uh, we need to you know to deal with that thing that we heard even on this call that war is normal throughout history you know where does that nonsense comes from our culture right we 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 see so many movies and read so many books and hear so many claims that war is just normal throughout history when it's when it's utter nonsense and we know for a fact that just about everybody does just about everything they can to avoid it um most of them with complete success um it's you know it's not in our genes male or female it's it's in a culture that we have to change and i think in the next 10 years if we're going to survive we're gonna have to change it. We're going to have to dismantle this US-led military empire without replacing it with some so-called balance of powers, you know, balance of imbalanced lunatics running the world, but replace it with at least the rudiments of, of international law and fairness and equity uh, across the world, including the abolition of nuclear weapons, um, or we're not gonna survive. Um, 
So I look forward to to working with wonderful people, uh, having a terrific time and trying to do that over the next 10 years. Um, and if people want to have uh, have gatherings weekly uh, at the global or regional or local levels, um, great, let's do it. Um, but uh, there's a tremendous amount of of work to be done. Um, you know, people are people are waking up. People are getting educated. Violence of all forms that aren't war is decreasing. Uh, but war has taken over governments. Um, and if we don't get the people uh, to build on the successes we've had and really end it, um, it's going to end us. So, good luck, everybody. Thanks for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And, and on the, that note, have a lovely rest of your evening or your morning or your day. Keep on going, focusing on the good things that if we ended war, we'd have so much money to do really great things. And keep shoulder tapping people to join us because that's what really works. Um, that uh, Leah shoulder tapped shoulder tap me in Chicago. It was amazing. Anyway, thanks, Alex, for doing a, a, a great job and everybody who's helped today. Um, yeah, we love you all. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.